Welcome back everyone as we cruise through these brain tumor board review cases for the spring of 2022. Case number five here today is a 57 year old man with visual changes. Well on his imaging here you can take a look at why he might be having visual changes. We have a coronal T2 uh, right here and a coronal post contrast here. Take a look at what you might think the abnormality is. I'm going to show you some more images here. We have a sagittal pre-contrast image through the midline and a post-contrast image through the midline here. Kind of take a look at what you think the abnormality is. Form a differential in your head here. Your first question is, what's your most likely diagnosis? If you've seen a theme in these videos, that's usually going to be the first question. That's usually what the ABR is going for on its simplest questions. Our second question is, which of these is associated with hemorrhage of these masses? This is a little bit of a second order question. You have to have a pretty decent idea of what this mass is before you come up with an answer. Is it postpartum? Is it uh, aspirin? Is it a seizure or is it abdominal pain? Now, this is a case of pituitary adenoma. Pituitary adenomas are benign adenomas of the anterior pituitary. They're quite common. Uh, they're about 10 to 15 percent of all intracranial neoplasms and you see them if you do autopsy studies you see a number of patients have uh, incidental pituitary adenomas about half of them are hormone producing and so non-secreting are about half functional are about half of the hormone producing ones uh, prolactin is the most common followed by growth hormone and acth on imaging what you're going to see is something that's t1 iso intense to the surrounding pituitary but on post contrast, what you will often see is the adenoma will enhance, but it will enhance slower and less than the adjacent normal pituitary. Other nice clues are you may see deviation of the infundibulum to the side opposite the lesion. You can sometimes have hemorrhage and cystic changes. Now, these are benign, but they can cause local morbidity and lower patient's lifespan. The treatment for these is primarily surgery. But if it can't be completely resected or if it's a large lesion, you may supplement that with radiation. So here we have the images that you saw here. You have the T2 where you have a kind of slightly hyper intense to gray matter lesion. It's kind of centered in the cella, but it's also going into both cavernous sinuses here. And you see on the left a little bit more, it's kind of reaching over. The description of these is often like a snowman. You can almost see this outline here where you have a you know, head here, kind of a bigger, thicker body here. In this case, this adenoma is uh, extending to the supracellar region, extending beyond the cavernous sinus here. So both of those structures are involved here. Now on your sagittal images, you see the same thing. You see expansion of the cella. So this is far larger than what the cella should be. But what you'll note is that there's still some normal cortex here at the bottom. So this is expansion of the cella over a long period of time. So you're probably not looking at a super aggressive mass here. You're dealing with something that's kind of slow growing. Here you see on your post contrast, the same things that you saw on your coronal images. You see supercellar extension. You see a little nodule extending back here. You know the optic chiasm is going to be going right in between. So it's easy to see why this patient might be having optic symptoms. Now your answer to your question here, which is associated with hemorrhage of these masses, uh, hemorrhage of a pituitary adenoma is called pituitary apoplexy. And there are a couple of things that it's associated with, including being postpartum, being on medical treatment for a prolactinoma, such as bromocryptine, or uh, if you see in some of the review books, it will say uh, receiving a cerebral angiogram. So if you see one of those things, that might uh, lead you to believe uh, that's more likely to be apoplexy. Thanks to everyone for tuning in today. This is case five out of 20 brain tumor cases that we have coming up this spring. Be sure to like the video, tune in for the rest of the videos as you'll see them coming out every couple of days uh, for the rest of the spring here as you guys get ready for the ABR exam. Thanks to everyone for tuning in and I uh, hope you like the video.